Monday, Tuesday, happy pens. Wednesday, Thursday, flashy pens. Friday, Saturday, fountain pens. Sunday Shopper. FBGeeks.com is all about the Sunday Shopper. So much so that we decided to give it its own slot on the site. There'll be pens, witty banter, beautiful women. Well, probably not. Pretty women. Catch the Sunday Shopper every Sunday, only on FBGeeks.com. Indulge the madness. Hey, Mr. Smith, how you doing today? I'm doing really good. A little tired, but uh, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, you're a little tired because it's Saturday night. It's uh, 7.45 it's only, for me, but... Uh, yeah, it's uh, only 9.45. 9.45 for you. Well, There's let's no get... way I should be tired, but I am for some reason. That's true. It's a little early. You can stay up till at least 11 if you're looking at eBay stuff, can't you? Oh, geez. I've been looking at eBay stuff all day. <laughs> Well, welcome to Sunday Shopper. Uh, before we get going, let's uh, say hello. Let's say hello to Gordon Tillman. And Mrs. Tillman, if you're listening, a good hello to you as well. How you doing? And uh, let's see, I'm going to pull up the page because we have to also say hello to Julie. Julie, a.k.a. Okami, who sent us a note this week that says, We love FP Geeks. It's a Waterman 42, and she signed Man, it. Man, look at that pen. That pen she found through, well, she got it on eBay, but I believe she found it... Uh, through Sunday Shopper, if that's if I'm understanding yeah, correctly, correct. I think that's yep. what she told us, uh, and that pen is just beautiful. It's a Waterman Forty Two safety pen. You're welcome, and, Julie. And I want to I want to see it the next time we see each other. Not that I've ever met her. Yeah, but I'm sure she'll she'll let me see it. You have a plethora of pens here. Um, <laughs> I went crazy today. Uh, gosh, I guess where should we start? I sent well, you these at the top, the Pelicans. I I, yeah, I was on a let's Pelican just start kick. Start with. Your your pick. Before we get to the Pelicans, though, uh, last week uh, you sent me off on uh, a vanishing point kick, and I want you to know that I have spent many many hours this past week looking for a vanishing point because you hooked me. Oh, I that's all I've heard from you. <laughs> I need one now. I absolutely need one. At least the good news is that I've kind of figured out what I want. I want a faceted version, which I guess they called the capless, and I want a, a broad nib on it. And I would like it to be in some kind of a neat color. So I'm in no hurry. I'm waiting for the right one to find me. And I don't know. Do you think I might find one at the L.A. Pen Show? Oh, yeah. Without uh, a problem. Good. I can't wait. <laughs> uh, yes, for some reason I was on a Pelican kick uh, and sent you these links. Uh, I really like the look of Pelican pens. Um, I haven't owned that many. I do have my eye on an M1000. I'm really hoping to pick one up at the LA Pen Show or, yeah, and or an M800. Uh, something about the vintage pens uh, by Pelican also uh, grabs my attention. Let's just take a look at this uh, 1956, they're saying, uh, Pelican 140. I, I, I'm, I'm fooled a lot. I don't know if I'm fooled, but when, when the sellers go to the trouble of taking really nice photographs of their pens... It really captures my attention. And these are some nice photographs. They're very good. I, I could buy the pen just based on the photographs alone, not knowing anything about uh, this particular uh, 140. But I don't really have to know everything about it because when I'm looking for Pelican information, I go to a website. And I'll share that with you. Yeah, you know, someone who takes pictures of a lot of fountain pens for reviews and, and different things. The, I mean, these photos are really good. It's. I don't think the pen will ever look this good in your hand. This is great <laughs> lighting, and and I don't know. I won't, I probably guess that it's been retouched enough to get everything perfect. I'm not saying that the pen itself is isn't going to look like this. It's just never going to look this beautiful. I've had that happen. I've I've learned uh, because you see a pen like this in pictures, and when you get it in your own hand, it just and you especially if you try to photograph it it just never comes out mm -hmm. quite like these anyway when i'm looking for pelican information i go to pelicanguide.com and that's pelican hyphen guide.com because they have all the pelicans i'll keep this right here they have all the pelicans and this is just for vintage really listed up here so which one are we looking for we're looking for a 140, 140. so here we can find 140 information and if I were going to bid on this pen, I would spend some time looking through this information uh, to see if it really is a 1956 pen um, on, on other brands. And I guess we'll get to those. Not other brands, but other models of the Pelican. Uh, let's see. Here's a 100N, for instance. So let's say I was interested in the 100N. 
I would try to find information right here. They have an overview. They have about the caps. The, they have all sorts of information that would help me determine. He's saying, I guess he's not saying what year. But that's the research that I would do if I were about to pit, bid on a on a vintage pelican. I would go to pelicanguide.com and and do a little research because this is really good information. It has lots of pictures. Yeah, we stumbled upon that site um, what several weeks ago, and I think we we featured it in a blog post. And it's the most comprehensive guide to pelicans I've ever seen. And if you just want eye candy, you can just spend your time at this site and not even be tempted to bid on anything. Of course, <laughs> this site might send you looking for things to bid on at, at yeah, eBay. Yeah, very true. What I like about pelicans is they're, they're, there's a lot of them out there. If, if oh, you're looking so for many. a particular pelican, you know, not as I'm not going to say it, they are as common. Uh, they're as easy to find as Estabrooks. Estabrooks are just everywhere. But there's, pelican is right up there. If you're looking for a pelican, if you want to start a pelican collection, uh, you'll you'll get satisfaction quickly. So on that uh, 56 140, um, scroll down and take a look at the the nib shots and then the writing sample. I, I think you mean this pen? Yeah, that one. And keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Like that nib, do you? Look at that. <laughs> That's some nice writing samples. That that alone is, is what would make me want to bid on this. Are you going to bid on this one? No, I'm not. You're but not. <laughs> if I was looking for a flex nib, I mean, this would certainly qualify. Yeah, this is very, very tempting, but I'm not buying a pelican today. I already spent my budget today, so we'll just skip what do you, it. Wait, whoa, what? Oh, you know what I bought. <laughs> well, I, I, I even have pictures right here. Are you going to share that? Yeah, I got a, I got myself a vintage uh, Mont Blanc, a, two, a 264, and this Ooh. is it right here. And it should be in my hot little hand sometime this week. Now, this was Very not an nice. eBay find. This was actually on FPN, Fountain Pen Network, uh, where I don't usually buy a lot of pens on Fountain Pen Network. But this one just came up, and I couldn't resist. I held off as long as I could. Nice. <laughs> but then, you know, I just had to have it. So I can't, I can't even think about bidding on any of these pelicans. Not today. Maybe tomorrow. I'll have it recovered by tomorrow. <laughs> so... Uh... I'm guessing here, uh, based on what I'm seeing, that you're going to take us down on a tour of snorkels. Yeah. Um, Which one would I've, you like to see first? Well, let's just start with uh, the gray, the Schaefer Snorkel Special. Is this the one here? The gray? Yes, right right below your last pelican. Okay. Now, the snorkels, they were made from 1952 to 1959, and overall there's about 13 different models. Uh, this one here, we'll, we'll start with the non-white dot versions. And these all feature plastic caps and open nibs. So you can see there that the nib um, isn't conical. So right. it's, it's not the, the Triumph nib that um, a lot of people are familiar with on the snorkels. Right. And, and these were like... This is the very bottom tier of snorkel. It features a, a palladium silver nib and, you know, basically just your entry level pen. And what would something like this go for? Do we have any idea? Um, it's only got 18 hours left to go and apparently no one's bid on it yet? Yeah. I think this is a $25 pen. You're going to make me buy another pen today, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, I, I wouldn't expect it to go for very much more than that. And, you know, gray is, is a very common color. There's really not a whole lot special about this pen other than it's a snorkel. Right. And so if, if you just want to get into snorkels, um, this is a good place to start because you can really do it on the cheap. Yeah, that's a I've had a snorkel and. Uh, so I don't need to go back down that road, but that was an interesting pen. And so this one is the Admiral. Right, now, and it's getting more, more attention here. It's already got eight bids, and it's up a little in price. Right, and it's, it's because of the, the color, and it also features a gold monotone nib. Aha. Uh -huh. So still no white dot, um, but it, you know, it is a, a nicer color, and it has a gold nib. 
Was the so, feet on that first one the same uh, shape as this one? This one seems very cylindrical. Um, I, I believe so. They should have been. It's just the most interesting filling system. It's, oh, it's yeah. like, it's, a, what, a hummingbird or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's really the only reason I'm interested in them is, is because is the of filling the filling system. system. Yeah, yeah. I, I think they're a little thin for my hand, if I remember mine correctly. It was not uncomfortable, but if I were going to sit down and write for half an hour, I'd probably want something a little with a little more girth. Yeah. And so then the next one, the Saratoga, this is the exact same as the previous two, except it features a gold two-tone nib oh this is beautiful i like that nib right here so yeah i mean th that that two-tone contrast it, it gives it a lot of flair and the, the first two did they didn't have the the heart-shaped breather hole did they oh you know what i didn't even notice i that. didn't notice it but I, i'm gonna say they didn't without even going back to look i'm gonna say they didn't because i noticed it here the first time i i would hope that i would have noticed it had they had them oh oh look, yeah they, I, they I do. still have them here so i can go back and darn i'm not even gonna edit that out people <laughs> they, they do that what do you know yeah i didn't even notice it's that. funny how uh. i didn't notice it until we got to a two-tone nib hmm wonder what that says about me. So this one's going to go for more than the first two that we looked at? Oh, um, well, that starting bid is already... I mean, there's no bids, but the, the opening bid is already more than that the other two are going for. I, ideally, yes, um, just because of the, the jump and, and nib. Um, color will actually have more to do with what the price goes for than trim level. And this is a burgundy. Right. And so we're going to say this is common. Yeah, okay. common, and and in fact, so so is the the pastel blue, the, the one we looked at just previous. This is a common color too, and this is a very common color. So right. I imagine you have something spectacular for us here. Should we go to the Statesman? Yeah, let's definitely. I like the Statesman. That's the one I had. Was a Statesman, and uh, so the the Statesman. Now we move into the, the white dot line, and. This features the, the Triumph con conical nib right. and a uh, Palladium's silver nib. And I like those wraparound nibs. Oh, yeah. They're, I think they look much better than yes. open nibs. On all pens? You would like that on all pens, or you're just saying on the snorkels? Oh, no, 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 on the snorkels. Right. I, I only like them on, well, on the pens I've seen them on. I wouldn't want them on all, all, all pens. Um, but now what's the did you say this nib is is gold no it's uh palladium silver oh okay so, so um the starting bid here is 50 dollars. that's a good price it's yeah it's not bad i i wouldn't go much higher than that okay uh, i would probably you know save that for the the next few pins that we get into no uh this is a statesman what makes it a statesman uh the jump to the white dot and the conical nib. Okay. Okay. So perhaps we'll see some more statesmen. Uh, no, I don't have. I have okay. other uh, examples of different models. So if we go to the next one, which is the Valiant, mm -hmm. the only difference here from the statement statesman is it's a 14k two tone nib. So you still got plastic cap, white dot, but you jump up from a palladium silver nib to a two-tone gold nib. I see, a very nice looking nib too. And this one, oh, it's a buy it now for $150. Yeah, it's- I, saying, I wouldn't um, pay that for this pen. No, I, it's, it's, it's pretty could ridiculous. Be. I, I okay. grabbed it just for an example of, of what the model is. Right, I thought maybe I was wrong, ignorant about it, but can't blame them for trying. And so the next one, the Clipper, now here, the, the, the big difference is the metal cap. Right. So we're, we're still white dot. We got a metal cap now. We'll have the, the Triumph nib. And, and this one features the Palladium, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the Palladium silver nib. Uh, this looks a little two-tonish to me, but is that not true? I guess it doesn't here, so... Um, it oh, might not hear your either. reflection. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> one of the photos looks two tone, so it must be two tone. <laughs> and this one's starting at nine dollars and seventy cents. Yeah, it's 
it's crazy. I, I mean, you really got to know what snorkels you're bidding on to, to get an accurate price, or at least not to, to overpay for one. Um, now this this one has a monogram. What's your opinion on monograms? Does it have any effect on value of pens, or does it increase or decrease? I I think generally it decreases value just because most people don't want pens like that. Um, and we've talked about this a little bit before in a different episode. Um, but one pens where I actually do like it is the very early vacuumatics where they featured the actual person's signature. Right. Now that's a monogram. They actually yeah. take your signature and put it on the side of the pen. Now that's a p little uh, little piece of a history that goes on the side of your pen. But I'm not but a huge other fan than basic of, initials and right. you know a printed name. I'm I'm not a fan of um, if it's if it's a pen I'm really looking to to get for my collection or if it has a, a special nib I'll go ahead and buy it just for that and then you know if I can replace it later I'll do that right or if it happens to have your initials oh yes then, very true then then it's just meant to be. So we're going so now to sen the Sentinel. The Sentinel. And this is a, a step up in the nib. You get a, a 14 karat gold two tone nib. So here again, we've got the, the metal cap, uh, the white dot, and now a gold nib. And beautiful. Yeah, it, these, are, these are really nice looking pens. Oh, it has something on the side. What's it say? Um, wow. That might just be the. The imprint is like Schaefer. Yes, it is. Lifetime, and then. Uh, oh, that's uh, beautiful, and it's getting some activity. It's already got eight bids. It's already up to fifty-six dollars, and it doesn't end yeah, until tomorrow at four. Those are good prices. I I wouldn't expect to pay more than eighty or ninety dollars for any of these pens, um, especially because they're in you know very common colors, very ordinary nibs. Uh, nothing nothing real special about them. But then if we go to the next one, which is the Crest, this features a, uh, a gold-filled cap and a gold-filled clip. And it also has a 14-karat two-tone nib. So it, it jumps up quite nicely in, in trim level. Now, is it just the way the photograph was taken, or is this a bit wider, this pen? Just a hair I wider? No, it should be exactly the same okay. as all the other snorkels. Darn. <laughs> Although starting and, bid is $120, I would not have gone for that anyway. Yeah, and these these will get a little more simply because of the, the gold-filled cap and clips. So is that, uh, I like that pen. I, I like them in black. I don't know why. Well, it's just a good contrast. I mean, what black and gold, this? they go well together. What have you got here for us? So this should be the signature. And this features a, a plastic cap with a solid gold band. And you could actually get uh, your signature on these caps. Aha. Uh -huh. And do these caps come with someone's signature? Oh, in the cap band. Right. And this one does have, I don't know if it's a signature or just a... Uh, cursive engraving can't, um, can't really tell from the pictures this, this is as big as the pictures get yeah i don't i don't know why they do that sometimes but um i think it's usually a person's initials is what gets engraved on there the signature fountain pen and mechanical pencil now yeah, try to find one of these with your full name. Although, you know, Dan Smith, you could you could find a Dan Smith out there. Yeah, that's pretty common. <laughs> and so the, the next one that I want to look at is the autograph. And now this is, or no, I'm sorry, oh, this, this is, is not. I'm sorry, this is, I clicked no, on the wrong you didn't, one. No, you didn't skip one. Um, I actually couldn't find the autograph, I don't think. Um, I can go back and look. No, this is our last snorkel, apparently, unless you have one hidden down here somewhere. Okay, so... Let me just talk about the uh, autograph real quick. It's it's very similar to the signature, but that solid gold band is just wider, and it features a, a solid gold clip as well. So it's it's another bump in trim level. Still get the Triumph nib, uh, fourteen karat two tone nib, um, and then this next one that you were just looking at, the Triumph. This features a gold filled 
cap, clip, and body. Right. This is stunning, actually. Uh, it's it's a lot of gold. It's uh, a lot of gold. If you want a gold <laughs> pen, this is a gold pen, and the white dot looks really good on it. Surprisingly, yeah, I was I did, was not expecting it to look that good. And then there is one more pen. I don't I couldn't find an example of it. It's called the Masterpiece, and basically it looks just like this, except all the hardware is solid gold, not solid just gold. Gold, the Masterpiece. Yeah. Do you, do you keep your eye out for that, or is it uh, not something you're actually looking for? I'm, I'm just wondering how often it comes available. Um, I, I don't know. I've really never had an eye for snorkels before this, um, so, so I can't really say. But they, they do fetch a pretty penny. I would um, imagine so, especially with today's gold prices, just, just for the weight of the gold alone. Yeah. Now, how many snorkels do you have in your collection? I've only got one. Okay. That one that I bought from Greg a few weeks ago was my first snorkel. Wow. But uh, I think that's probably going to expand here. Because you like them so much, I do. I and it'll probably really, <clears throat> excuse me. It'll probably really only be uh, snorkels with special nibs on them. So, and then there is a, another snorkel that I couldn't find either. But they did make a demonstrator of that, and those are just insanely popular. You can see what I'm doing. I ran over to Greg's website for yeah. two reasons. One, I wanted to see if he had anything up for sale at the moment. and He lists stuff all the time. I know, but I never seem to catch him in time. <laughs> never, ever do I seem to catch him in time. I, I wish, I, I really wish he would tweet it when he, but I don't believe he's on Twitter. No, he's not. So um, you just have to I, kind of, I have a, a way of, of getting oh, his. Oh, do you? Okay. Yeah, his Don't share that. Don't share that. Don't worry, I won't. <laughs> But, uh, well, and you know, some of his pins, I mean, they, they, some of them literally sell out in minutes. Right. Well, this one that he has up at the top here was sold in 30 minutes. Yeah. And it's a, you know, a three band cap, a three cap band Parker dual fold with a, a nib. I assume he worked on uh, for $80. Oh yeah. He's got great prices. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, this would really... have tempted me. The only thing you're going to pay over $100 for on his website is if he's retipped it. Right. Which is a lot of work. Oh, yeah. And uh, he's, you know, really, really good at it. He had, I mean, we'll just I, look at some of those nibs. I mean, my goodness, those things are monsters. I know. This is another place you can spend all day at. Uh, he had a Venus on here that I know I would have purchased if I had caught it in time. Just, it really caught my eye. But... I, it's just one of those sites that I have to go to several times a day to see when he, when he posts something. Anyway, back to our Sunday shopper. <laughs> Sorry <laughs> see about how that. Easy it is to get sidetracked. <laughs> We've got lots uh, of pens here. Is there? Uh, I, I suppose I, you want to talk about the flighter. Okay, we will. We'll get back to that. So, so go back up to the okay. end of the Schaefer's and let's take a look at this Tibal Tibaldi. All right. Now I'm abs. I have no knowledge of Tibaldi whatsoever. But I saw this pen and I about passed out. You like it, yeah? It, oh my God, that ma material is, is gorgeous. I mean... Beautiful. Look at it. It's faceted. It, I mean, I haven't yeah, read the description, this, but it, the, in the picture, it certainly looks faceted. This is my pen. I this mean, this guy pen. doesn't know it, but it's it's my pen. <laughs> I mean, it's got facets, that celluloid. It's... Oh. Have you read the description about the nib? What What does it say? It says rare mint condition Tibaldi Imperio fountain pen with 18k gold medium nib, oh. and that's that's the whole that's pen description. The whole description. So and I don't know has, if I would has, actually bid on this. There has apparently um, been a bid on it, starting starting bid four hundred fifty dollars. But I just can't get over that material. That is beautiful, isn't it? Just gorgeous. Oh well, that's no that's one I'm going to pass on though. I'll just yeah. Uh, Use it as eye candy and move along, move along. You found a Mandarin yellow, also known as Chinese yellow, do a fold. Now, this one looks smallish. Yeah, I, um, I know a lot of people like dual folds, and, and the Mandarin yellow is, you know, pretty uncommon. Okay, this is a, I believe, the, I, don't, I don't know much about dual folds, except I like the yellow ones, which apparently lots of people do. Um, this is shorter than five inches uh, i think they called it the lady pen or the ladies pen um but i 
don't recall ever seeing one with a cap band this large that wasn't also a ring top. But, you know, I certainly haven't seen all of them. I just, yeah. when I saw this cap band so large, I would have expected a ring top on it. But um, look, it's getting some attention. Oh, yeah. It's getting attention. And I, I expect it'll go up a little higher before it gets sold. Something about that yellow, which apparently wasn't very popular when it came out. Which, no, so there, I don't there's, think it was. there's not too many of them, which of course now that we're collecting them makes them even more collectible. And so we've got to look at the next one, this vintage wear, wonderful old French safety. Oh, it's a safety. You know who's going to look at that one? <laughs> Although she's probably, this, I'm talking about Julie, but she's probably yes. very happy with her Waterman 42 safety. I'm sure she is. Um, this just, well, you know, it's got the modeled. Uh, material and it's a safety and I mean yeah this this wow. caught my attention right away it's four and a, four and five eighth inches uh, features a, a waterman 18k nib it's got it ends uh Sunday the 22nd at uh, 12 o'clock Pacific Standard Time so that's tomorrow for you and me Right. Um, and today for everyone who's listening on Sunday. And so it at the time we're looking at it six bids, hundred and twenty two dollars. I have no idea what this will go for. No. I imagine it'll it'll hit two hundred, maybe two fifty. Um, but really I have no idea. I'm just guessing there. Yeah, that's just an educated guess. Uh, there's uh, apparently no brand name. I'm I'm guessing it's the this brand name is Unique. Unic. Okay. Yeah, it's it's on the cap at the very top. But, um, yeah, I don't know anything about it. It's just, I just know it looks cool. Yeah. Now, see, this would appeal to somebody who specializes in French pens, especially, because there are people who do that. Oh, so yeah. They, they, they want to collect only French pens, and you know, I kind of lean in that direction myself. But I'm not going to start my French pen collection with this one, so let <laughs> somebody else have it. And then what have we got here? Uh, maybe Todd Swan. I really want to talk about this one, so let's just move on to it. I, I knew you would. <laughs> I... I can't say that I've ever seen, uh, what's it, what are they calling it? Silver pear color. Silver pear color, Mont Blanc. Pear? Doesn't it say pear? It's, right here. It does. Oh, yeah, wow. Silver pear. Um, uh, apparently made in Spain. Uh, the, the, the cap band looks a little off there. But I just think, oh yeah, look at the cat band. I, I think it's completely out of position mm -hmm. in this one, which is unfortunate. Um, but I mean, I've never seen a Mont Blanc like that. No, I haven't either. It's very interesting pen. Yeah. Um, a twenty-two, and we were looking actually. See, this is made in Spain for E. Vise. Um, we were looking at pictures in Mont, in your Mont Blanc book earlier for 22s, and they're completely different from this 22. Yeah, I wondering if if this pen maybe is mislabeled or what. I I should have gone through the book and searched a little bit well, there, to try and find it, but there is a 22 stamped in the blind cap. Hmm, that's that's strange. Yeah, it's it's certainly something interesting to look at. Something that I haven't seen before, certainly. And and I kind of like the fact that it was made in Spain. And then we get to your flighter. Yeah, I've always had a fascination with 51s, and especially just pens made in a metal version. Look at this. You're not the only one who has a fascination with the flighters. Oh, you, you'll see it. A lot more activity as this gets closer to ending. Oh, yeah, because flighters um, are really, really popular. I, w I would expect this to hit close to one 160. I mean... So... This is a Parker 51, but it was called a flighter, and you're going to tell us why, right? Um, because it's made of metal? I guess that's true. It's a, <laughs> if, when I think of flighter, it's this metal pen that we're looking at right here. Um, I, I wonder, and I don't know, if there's a story behind how the name came to be. Why did they call it a flighter? Was it? I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know it off the top of my head. I don't either. Huh. Yeah. You're not going to bid on this one? Do you have a flighter? No. I I don't now. But I've did. had yeah. two or three previously. So, yeah. I'm, you in know fact, I'm, you can see pictures of one that I have, and that post of the Greg Manuskin music nib, because that's what I had it installed in. 
at our website at our website yeah let me zip on over to our website what is that again fpgeeks.com and i should probably just use a search here tell me what to search for um i would try Music, maybe i would there try okay that works <laughs> so this was uh so in the gallery there, there there yep. it is this was your flighter oh <laughs> This one looks much nicer than the one on eBay. Is it, I, am I, I seeing it incorrectly? This no, one looks I, shinier. I refinished the barrel, and yeah, it was. Well, let's see, that's super. beautiful. This uh, flighter that they have kind of looks dull. Yeah, but this one, wow! And you let that one go. You didn't let the nib go with it, though. Oh no 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 no! <laughs> no, I I made a really good profit on that, so. I used it to fund, you know, other pens. And of course, that's what we do. I'm sure I'll, just, I'll get another one. We someday. recycle those funds. We never put anything back in the bank. Of course not. Uh, Conway Stewart, what'd you find for us there? Um, it says it's a number 58. Uh, I just really like that basket weave. Yeah, that material. is nice, it's, isn't it? Yeah, it's a good looking pen. It's a little small for me. Um, I think they said it was 128 millimeters. Um, let me look. 129 millimeters with the cap on, barrel diameter of 12 meter, millimeters. Well, at least they so give you all that information. I appreciate it when they do that. Yeah. Um, but, it, you know, it's a really good looking pen. Um, I like the cap bands. It's, I'm sure someone will enjoy it. And I mean, heck, it's only at 20 bucks right now. Is that a little. This Conway Stewart emblem here looks a little like a dollar sign. Sorry, people. Got off on a tangent there. <laughs> uh, it's at $20 right now with three days to go. It's going to go up from there. But yeah, you, a person could easily make an entire collection out of Conway Stewart vintage pants. Oh, my goodness. Easily and have fun doing it. Hey, what'd you find here? Just a really good price Delta Dolce Piston Oro. Is there no reserve on this? I don't think so. Wow. Now, this is uh, Chatterley Pens, um, or as we know them, yeah, that's, Bryant that's Brian. from Pen Time. Um I'm sure this is probably what's left of his stock that he's just trying to clear out. And uh, now this yeah, is, definitely this is a, a good pen. If you're looking for this pen, this is a good pen. <laughs> yeah, and at a heck of a price, too. Um, so if you're at all interested, definitely put that in your watch list and keep an eye on it. Yeah, how long does it have? It has three days. Mm -hmm. uh, if you could get it right now for 152, it's a real bargain. If you could get it right now for 152, I'd be buying it. Right. Even though I already have. <laughs> you already one. have one. <laughs> but that's how good of a pen it is. Yeah. And oh, you've got a Lamy here. Oh yeah. Um, a great workhorse of a pen. I mean, Lamy 2000, one of my favorite pens. Uh, yeah, I, it's only how how much is it right now? Forty two dollars and change. It, it'll go up. I just watched one end earlier today for eighty three dollars. So what kind of that's, nib? That's about what you can expect for it. What kind of nib did that one have? Um, I think it just had a regular medium nib in it. Oh, these pens are nice. These pens are nice. I, I don't know what I'm gonna do with you, Dan. Sending me all these nice pens. Can't you just put any ugly pens up here? Oh, that wouldn't be any fun. <laughs> All right. What did you find for us here? An Eversharp. You know, I have never been attracted to Eversharp. So, okay, I got my wish. You put a pen that I don't have any interest in. <laughs> <laughs> well, really. But if I were pen. going to be interested in an Eversharp, this would be the one. In fact, I think Julie's going to bid on this one, aren't you, Julie? It's it's a fairly large pen, um, five and a quarter inches closed. And it, it's got just an interesting pattern to the material right this is the yeah. most interesting that i've seen and i think we had one one or two weeks ago and uh i believe julie bid on it and and dropped out when did. it went over a hundred dollars i think it i might be lying so double check if you really want this information i think it went for about 110 112 something like that yeah. um so julie you you dropped out just a little early but i can't feel sorry for you because you have that beautiful waterman 42 right there and so this this does say it's a, a manifold nib so I, I believe that means it's rigid, non-flexible, um, which which is a shame because you know if I was going to pick up one of these pens, it'd be for the flex alone. We're talking but, uh, again about the Eversharp. Oh yes, I'm sorry. It's okay. You, you switched on I me. I switched, but that's okay. So this is and, yes, manifold is going to be a nail, right? So 
Yeah, I'm going to pass on that one. But I can certainly understand why people would be interested in that pen because it's an interesting shape, and I, I particularly like that material and color and pattern. And then we were going to our PFM. The, the last pen of the bunch, um, definitely one I need to add to my collection and soon. They're very popular. They're very popular. I, and they, I'll, I'll probably feature these sometime soon in the Sunday Shopper as well. Oh, maybe my, next week. Could be. <laughs> Since you're looking for one. You know, they but, uh, do nothing for me. So, uh, Are you serious? Yeah. I. Some pens are like that. People, well, like the 51, for, for instance. Lots and lots of people love the Parker 51. It really doesn't do much for me. And lots and lots of people like the PFM. Uh, and it just doesn't do much for me. So, Have you ever written with one? No. No, but this, okay. isn't, this isn't a pen that I would like to own because it doesn't appeal to my, my eye. And so uh, the, first, the first test a pen has to pass is whether or not I can look at it. And this one just is not appealing to me. So, But that should make all the people who do like this pen happy because I'm not out there bidding on these. I suppose if you want to, if you want to go that route, <laughs> but, uh, there's my buddy that lives close to me. He has one of these and it's, it's an XF nib. And every time I use it, it makes me want to start bargaining with them to trade. I mean, really? Yes. Because you're not, you're not a really big fan of, of fine or extra fine nibs and you want to bargain for one that's an XF. It, it's amazing. I mean, I really like them, but this pen, I bet this thing will hit 300 bucks. Really? Well, see, there's a pen I don't have to like. <laughs> so it's got four, almost five days still to go. It's at $56 right now, and you're thinking it's going to go up to 300 huh? It would not surprise me. Wow. And it just, now, you know, while well, I have this, you here. This specific auction might not because the seller's in Bangkok, and he only has 76 transactions. Are so I don't know. That or... might be dissuade a few people but true but at least it's a hundred percent positive feedback and a seven day money back uh guarantee what is it about the pen just the way it writes is what appeals to you most or is there well, something about the design that and it's basically a fat snorkel it's a fat snorkel and has the I same mean, filling system the, the pen is huge it, it feels great in the hand um I really like the inlaid nib design. I love the snorkel filling system. I mean, it's for, to me, it's just a cool freaking pen. It's a little like one of your Grail pens, huh? It's close. I mean, it's de it's definitely on a, a top ten list. Did you want to talk about this uh, place you can go? We were at the the Pelican Guide, looking for information on pelicans and just enjoying this eye candy. So, uh, did you want to talk about uh, oh, Pen yeah. Hero? I yeah, a good reference uh, to get more details about snorkels is definitely this penhero.com. And we'll uh, provide the full link in the show notes to this direct page. But he goes into just, you know, good in-depth detail about the snorkel and, and all the little nuances to it. So uh, definitely check that out if, if you got some time or if you're just interested. And there's, there's a demonstrator right there. That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. That's, that one I might like to have. Just because it's a demonstrator. <laughs> so it's they're they're cool pins. If you've never tried one, um, pick up you know one of those specials, a, a cheapy, and and check out that filling system. So they have Admiral. They have all sorts of different names for them. I I I happen to like them in black. I just think they're classy looking in black. Um, so that's my preference. If I had to, if someone pushed one on me, I'd say, oh, could you make it black, please? <laughs> that would be that would be my. My choice. I just like them. There's one of those um, autographs. Oh, the autograph. And, yeah, and you can his, see the very wide, solid gold band there. And it looks like somebody's actual autograph on that yep. band. Now that's that's interesting. Oh, this is the demonstrator again. How interesting! I would like to just see a demonstration of that demonstrator, just <laughs> to see how the the whole system works on the inside. Somebody should have a video of that somewhere. I'm going to go looking for that tonight. Well, anyway. it's a good reason for me to pick up a demo, I guess. Yeah, so I can look at it, and so you can make a video. Um, uh, yes, I'll put this link to Pen Hero and this link to uh, Pelican Guide uh, at the uh, somewhere on the... Uh, you said the show notes, but we don't actually do show notes for the Sunday Shopper, so I'll just put it on the Sunday Shopper page somewhere. Oh, In fact, yes, that's I'll right. Do, I'll put it right here above Julie's note and below all the pens. 
So Sounds good. I think that is our Sunday shopper. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to say happy bidding to everybody and get a pen that you really like. And once you do, uh, let us know about it because... Yes, absolutely. If you ever get a pen that we feature, that we show, please take pictures and, and write notes to us with it. We we want to see it. We want to see how it writes. And most of all, we want to know if you're enjoying it. Right, because we get a lot of, well, vicarious uh, good vibes when if we can't buy the pen ourselves, that knowing that somebody else got it is is almost just as much fun. Almost. Almost. So that's it for me. Is that it for you, Mr. Smith? Until next week. Until next week. Thank you very much. Talk to you later. Bye. Mm, my fabulous Delta Dolce Vita. Ah, my love, how you move me. You make my heart squeal and emotions run wild. The way you shimmer and glisten like the morning dew. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Here, you're cold. Allow my hand to warm you. Now, write for me. Do it. Do some Do it lovely. <clears throat> yeah, I'll take it. FPGeeks.com. And